Hey guys, Wave618 here. It is the 23rd of October today. Uh, we're going to do an update in Bitcoin now. And the key talking points in today's video, obviously we've seen a sell-off in price here in Bitcoin. And um, the main talking points will obviously be where are we going to find support? I mean, this is looking very corrective in nature. We're expecting some kind of a bounce. And whether that bounce is just a relief bounce or a new impulsive move to the upside developing, is one of the key things that we need to be looking out for but either way we should be seeing some kind of a bounce now the question is where are we going to find support okay so in today's video we're going to be looking at the various places that support can be found um, but ultimately we want to know what is going on here in bitcoin are, are we seeing weakness that is telling us we're going to come down much lower and maybe test these lows at 3200 or is this a temporary correction of this move up here and we're going to at least test all-time highs um, <clears throat> very soon. So these are the key talking points. I'm going to address all of these queries in today's video. So yeah, if interested, then stay tuned. guys so yeah i hope you're all doing well um all right so let's get started let's talk about this chart now first things first so obviously since we made our 20k high we've come down uh, in this uh, very corrective pattern so I, i've always had it as a three wave down w x wave as being a descending triangle a b c d and e and then we had our three waves down to make our final Y wave. So it was a three wave countdown. And um, the way I was looking at it is based on the time and price that had passed, it was looking like the completion of this correction. And um, for that reason, I was looking for an impulsive move to the upside. However, looking at the top 15 cryptos, this move to the upside from 3.2k up to 14k I've had to label as a corrective count and the reason being is, is a lot more apparent looking at the top 15 cryptos which I study um, in a lot of depth but here on Bitcoin it was very misleading it looked very impulsive in the sense that price moved up in a short space of time okay but in fact looking at it it looks like a hyper extended C wave here and what we see there's a perfect extension of wave c to wave a so if this is our a wave take a fib extension from the end of b and we hit the 4.236 so now i've not plotted the pivots perfectly when they're plotted perfectly you'll find this comes up to exactly 4.236 to the point okay so that's one thing now obviously if we use those pivots that's a b and c that's basically taking into account that this B wave is in fact an ascending triangle, and that's an A, B, C, D, and E, okay? Now, if you've got a triangle in your second wave here, that means that we're most likely looking at a corrective count because you shouldn't be getting a wave two uh, triangle. And so obviously, that rules out it being impulsive. So there's no option for this being a one, a two, a three, and then we're going into a four and five following on from here. So that's why I've labeled it with letters gone from A, B and C. The other thing supporting this count is the fact that this pitchfork was holding price really, really nicely. So this is an original pitchfork using the first pivot here, second pivot here and third pivot here. Now, of all the pitchforks that you can use for this upward trend, this is by far the best a pitchfork that holds price the nicest. You can see that profits were taken as soon as we hit the median, uh, the median line, price consolidated. We then, want, following uh, the completion of this consolidation, this what looks like a, a running flat, we then progress up to the upper median line and again made another uh, running flat pattern. Once that was over, we then progressed to the upper warning line. So these warning lines and median lines were getting respected really, really nicely, which was what gave me further support that this was the preferred count, with this being the first pivot, second pivot, and third pivot, uh, and this being a, the end of our second wave, which would make this a triangle, which would make this all corrective. So that's the way I was looking at it. 
Uh, and that was supported by the fact that it was looking very, very corrective, this move up throughout 2019 across all of crypto, across all of the altcoins. Okay, so yeah, correlating charts are always very important to look out for. Now, obviously, we've seen this move coming down here. It is looking corrective. You know, you can see, first of all, it's coming down slower than price moved up here. Uh, but also, we've got these very overlapping waves. So it is following a very corrective wave count in the way it's coming down here. So the question is really, how far are we going to come down before we see a bounce? And the bounce, is it going to be a significant swing low or just a relief bounce before we then head and propagate even further down? OK, so these are the two things to consider. And I will be explaining what are the things I'll be looking out for to help determine either scenario. Um, but at present, obviously, we're in a downtrend. We're following this downward pitchfork. Now, I did mention about the possibility of price finding support at this lower warning line. OK, it was kind of contrary to the shorter t time frame count, because obviously we saw an impulsive move down here, sideways move. And then there was every possibility of a, an aggressive move down further, which is in fact playing out now. OK, but looking at the higher time frames, there was an argument for a lot of support around this level. There was obviously this. Uh, upward slope and lower warning line for the major pitchfork. Um, there was the um, there was a three wave down to make W. Then we had our X, and then the Y came down. And at this point, Y was a one to one relationship with wave W. Okay, so that was another bit of support at, at this level around seventy nine hundred. And on top of that, we had the hundred week moving average, which was also offering support. So there was always a good argument for a potential bounce at that level. But as you can see, we're broken down and I'm not surprised to see price come down dramatically because this was, that was a key level, 7,900. There was a lot of indicators holding price at that level. Um, <clears throat> that said, I've mentioned several times that this lower warning line here does not have to hold. It does not have to hold price. Because effectively, this pitchfork is finished, it's done with. Once it completed its count up to here, it was, it was finished. Obviously, people who might have considered this an impulsive move, one, two, three, and then we're looking for a wave four, then you would want this pitchfork to hold. Okay, But if you're looking at it as an ABC, the count is finished. The upward move is finished. This pitchfork is no longer significant. And so you can fully expect this low warning line to break. OK, so I've mentioned time and time again, it is a, an interesting line to, to monitor, but it doesn't have to hold. OK, we can easily have a, a correction of this move up and then still continue higher. A break of this lower warning line does not invalidate that. OK, now we can really ignore this upward pitchfork now. We've broken out to the downside quite emphatically. So I'm actually going to take it off just for the time being and because this is the key pitchfork that we need to be monitoring now. Um, so here you can see price is following it very nicely. So we've got our first pivot, second pivot and third pivot using our first three clear uh, swing highs and lows here. And you can see price very nicely is ranging between low median line and upper median line. Tested the median line several times, upper median line and then we're hovering around the median line and we're just uh, come under it now and there's a good chance we test the lower median line here okay so that's one thing that I'm closely monitoring um, in terms of how far we come down now I've mentioned previously the 0.618 retracement is a definite a good preliminary target and that sits at 7200 and we do need to look at it on the linear scale so this is on the linear scale so you can see 7245 uh, which we're actually very, very close to, um, is where the 0.618 lies. Now, to be honest, I'm not expecting price to just hit this level and suddenly bounce to the upside. I mean, that can certainly happen, but I'm very cautious of price testing this range here uh, where the top of it is around 6,800 or 6,700 and the bottom around 6,100. Okay, I'm very conscious of price coming into this range. I do think it needs to get tested. Uh, on top of that, around 7100, there is a, a Bitcoin futures gap that, that is to be closed as well. So that's the other thing to be mindful of. 
Um, okay, so just keep in mind 0.618 retracement on the linear scale is at around 7245. Um, back on our log chart now. So let's take that off. Um, but the also, also significance of 7245 is you can see this significant daily candle close around this level. Okay, so that can offer another bit of support. Essentially, it's the bottom of this range, this consolidation here that led to this aggressive move up. So there are obviously a lot of buy orders within this block here, and they will be defended around this level around 7200. Okay, so a couple of reasons why we could see support at 7200. Now, essentially, the Elliott wave count coming down, I've got this as a three wave move down, three waves up and then we're looking for the Y wave to the downside. So how far is that likely to come down? So I mentioned there's a one-to-one -one relationship um, that we've overcome now. That one-to-one -one relationship was at 7,900 or 8,000. Okay, we've clearly overcome that. And we can hit see all of these targets hit, to be honest, the 1.236, 1.382, 1.618. These are all potential WXY uh, FIB targets. So you can see there is confluence at the 1.236 so that comes in at 7263 which would give confluence with the the 0.618 on the linear scale of the whole move up from 3.2k to 14k okay so there is a bit of confluence around that 72 and 7250 mark um but as i say there's a good chance we test this range and you'll see the 1.382 and 1.618 Basically, if we draw a block around this range here, you'll see there's confluence. The top of the block is gives confluence with the 1.382 extension, whilst the bottom of the block is the 1.618 extension. So there's a very good chance we there's confluence around this level as well. There's a very good chance we come in and test this range here. Um, the other thing to be mindful of is the, the lower median line. So we've taken out the median line here so then price will often come down and test the lower median line which could bring price down as far as around 6400 okay so yeah there the so 7200 is where i'm initially looking for price to probably quite easily come down and test yeah but in my opinion we're this this consolidation here is likely to lead to a lot more selling than just this small move down that's why i'm forecasting a, a bigger drop and i think price price will probably get absorbed with a, a buying pressure when we get into this block okay now what i would be looking for is if we do dip into this 60 around 6800 level if price does come down into it i would want to see price come above 6800 so above this level and then I would want to see a retest of that level before getting in but and I'd also be looking at volume I'd want to see volume coming in okay so this is where I expect to see price start bouncing and I'm sure a lot of people are talk, talking about this level it's not hard to identify this consolidation here but I do think we are probably going to test this at least the top of it around 6800 and I've got a feeling we are going to go further than that 7200. We may get a weekly close around 7200, but um, yeah, certainly I'd expect at least a wick down to around this 6800 level. Okay, now the big question is, if we do see a bounce around this level, is it going to be impulsive or is it going to be corrective? And that is really going to help determine the fate of Bitcoin, whether it is impulsive or corrective. Because there's two major counts, okay, looking on the, the higher time frames now. So I'm not going to go into the wave count in Bitcoin from its genesis 10 years ago, because I covered that in a video on the 4th of May. If you look back on my YouTube videos from 4th of May, you'll see where I covered that. But basically, there were two counts, and they were based on whether this was the end of a major wave five or whether it was the end of a major wave three with my bias leading towards this being the end of a major wave three and that's why i was looking at this as a wave four now with my preferred count if this is a wave four previously i was suggesting this could have been the end of the wave four but because this is look corrective in nature i'm now leaning towards 
it in fact being a continuation of the wave four and this being a A, B, C, D and E, sorry, D up here. So it's basically an ascending triangle. So an A, B, C, D and E. And basically we're halfway through the B wave. So we've seen an A, B, C to make the first leg of the three, three wave move up for the B. Now we're correcting it and then we're going to finish off the B wave coming up to the all time high mark before we then see another correction and then another test of the all time high, then another correction before going even higher. That's the way I'm looking at it, but I'm very conscious of the alternate count, which is basically if this is a, um, a major wave five, then obviously we, we're probably definitely going to be correcting. We're likely going to co correct even further than this 3.2k bottom here, in which case the count would be this being our three waves moved down, W, this probably being the end of our X wave, and then our Y wave is going to come down lower, at least to around 2.5k. All right. I'm very conscious of this count, but it's not my preferred count. And I believe that the bounce that we see, probably around 6,800, will help the way price responds at that level will help differentiate these two major counts, whether it's going to come down to 2.5K or whether we're going to see price keep consolidating and going higher, at least testing all time highs quite soon. Okay, so it will really depend the price from 6.8K. If it starts moving up aggressively in an impulsive fashion, good volume coming in. In fact, we don't need to see good volume because it's actually if it were a triangle, then it would be still part of a corrective move up to the upside. Um, <clears throat> basically, the only way to differentiate is price getting above this um, upper warning line here. That would be my key differentiation point. For this to be a WXY, price would need to stay in this downward pitchfork here. If we go above the upper warning line, momentum has been lost for this downward move. And I would be certainly of the opinion that we're going to go and test all time highs. So this pitchfork is key. Yeah, a break to the upside of this upper warning line for me would suggest that this downward momentum is being lost. And um, yeah, it's more likely in such a case that this is going to be a wave four play out and not a major wave two, suggesting this was a, the end of a major wave five. Um, Okay, so yeah, that's what this pitchfork is one of the key things. But also, as I say, I'll be looking at whether the move up is in, impulsive or corrective. Now, if it were to come down much lower, I'm talking about this, but it's not my preferred count. But I just want to make everyone aware of all the thoughts that are going on in my head because I'm always conscious of the bullish and bearish scenario, and I think it's worth everybody being aware of these um, so that you you know you control your risk. But I foresee if this uh, was just a relief bounce at around 6.8k, I can't see us getting above 9.3, 9.3, where we've seen a lot of overhead resistance. Price would definitely struggle around that level. And as I say, I can't see it getting above this upper warning line. So if we do see price getting above 9.3 or above this upper warning line, for me, that's confirmation that we are going to push higher. OK. All right. So, yeah, they're the two key things I'm looking out for. So I'll, I'm going to be updating you on YouTube with regards to the uh, how price responds at around 6.8K. And then we'll, we'll be able to determine whether price is looking likely to breach this pitchfork to the upside or not, or whether it's going to uh, just roll over and come down lower, in which case there's a good chance we come down and test these lows here. A loss, you know, coming down beneath this range here is is would be frightening for Bitcoin for the longs. Yeah, this has to hold. Absolutely has to hold. Otherwise, we're coming below 3.2k. That, that's uh, yeah, there's a high probability move if that plays out. But um, yeah, short term, I'm looking for a move down to 6.8k. That's where we're looking for a bit of a bounce. And I've mentioned the key things that I'm looking for to help differentiate between the, ma the two major counts. OK. Um, yeah. So I think I've summarized pretty much everything I want to say in this video. Um, 
I think I did mention Camarilla pivots. We can just pull those up a moment on the daily time frame. So you can see on the daily, these Camarilla pivots are significant. Because, uh, in fact, let's take off all the drawings. But you can see the R4 often gets tested, the S3, R3 here acting as resistance, S4 as support. We're currently at the S3, it's offering a little bit of support. But the S4 could very well get tested, that's at 6,500. Okay, so I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a test of the S4 um, before the end of the month because this range is for the month here on the Camarilla pivots. All right, I think I've covered all the things that I want to really discuss. Obviously, if there's anything I've, you feel I've left out, you have any queries, please put those in the comments. I'm very happy to respond to your queries. Um, but yeah, these are the things that I'm looking out for. I'm expecting more of a move to the downside here probably to around 6,800, that's the preliminary target. And um, yeah, let's see how things play out. All right, guys, I think we're gonna wrap it up. All right, take care.